welcome back with Vanessa. So I'm going to share a little bit of history with you about Lake Simcoe. Um, Lake Simcoe has, been, has had many names before it was named after John Graves Simcoe in 1793. This lake was part of a much bigger lake before known as Lake Algonquin. That was a prehistoric, pre-glacier lake that existed at the time of the last ice age. I want to show you the time after that ice age. This lake was home to many indigenous tribes and people before the contact of the explorers, the Jesuits and fur traders. This vast body of fresh water was home to many species of fresh fish. Sturgeon was an important staple in these waters. This lake was also a harvesting place for wild rice for the indigenous people who lived here. This water was so fresh that you could drink until your belly was full without fear of getting sick. Those were the times before pollution of this beautiful freshwater lake. We can look back to the time when the Wenat people lived here and called this Lake Ovataran, which translated to beautiful waters. This tribe lived here for some time and was eventually decimated from sickness brought by the explorers and fur traders. This population decline was also attributed to wars from local tribes as well. This area seemed war even before the French and Dutch and British came to fight and conquer it. What was left of their tribe from sickness after war, the Wendat people in this region eventually moved east to Wendaki in Quebec. To this day, there is a site in Barrie that proves their existence here. The old buried train station was to be restored, but when studies of the site were conducted, it was discovered that the bones of the Wendat people were unearthed. This site is still under investigation in how to handle the desecration of this ancient burial site. This lake is also known by the Mohawk as Lake Takaranto. On most maps, it's spelled without the K on it. This word translates to where there are trees standing in the waters. Which is referring to the ancient fishing weirs at Atherley Narrows between Lake Simcoe and Lake Kuchiching. This was printed on a map indicating and showing a portage road. The portage road that link, link, linked Lake Simcoe and Georgian Bay area to the mouth of the Humber River would eventually be known as the Toronto Carrying Place Trail. This name, Takarano, was carried into the city we know today as the city of Toronto. The Barry area too was inhabited by Mohawks looking for hunting grounds in a future place to make crops for their people. Again, wars between the tribes for this area continued and eventually the Mohawks were driven out. In my search for this area for Anishinaabe when spelling on the maps, I could not find any as this lake was already colonized by the settlers, John Graves Simcoe. This area was also used and inhabited by the Anishinaabewin people. I have heard two names in Anishinaabewin for this lake, Wabash Gaming, which means the shining lake, and I have also heard Jonya Gaming, which translates to the place of the shining waters. The Anishinaabe people use this area for fur trade with other tribes before the explorers even came to this region. There were maple camps and hunting grounds and harvesting happening all before the takeover and surrendering of the land. The Anishinaabe people are the current stewards of this area and it is their lands, their treaty lands that we stand on. There is a vast history of this area before it was written and I encourage you to dig deeper into the Past, beyond books, listen to the traditional knowledge keepers of this area. They will share and tell you of many stories that have been passed down from generations in hundreds of years before this land was settled by the Europeans. Keep digging, keep looking, keep listening to the past of our people in this land. There you will hear the real history of Turtle Island. Miigwech.